Twitch, don't lie to me. I know we're live. Come on, Twitch. There we go. There we go. Hmm. All right. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's real good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's working. Hello, everyone. Hello, Welcome. hello, hello. Um, we are we are live. Just waiting for a few minutes for everyone to uh, trickle in. Um, no sound. There's just, no. It's no. Nah, they're, they're trolling. Someone's trolling. Right? Two people said no sound. Oh man. Rip. Well, I know, I know. I, I, oh, now there's no sound. That one doesn't he, actually count, though. Okay, people. Okay, you guys are trolls, man. I hate all of you. <laughs> just kidding. Seriously. Hopefully there is sound. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Hello. week's episode of Top Clack. Hopefully you guys are, you know, comfy and strapping yourselves in with a, a beverage and you're going to join us for the long haul. We do have a guest on today, so people that are, you know, looking forward to that kind of thing, look forward to that. Yeah. We've got a lot of news. It's going to be a good time. It's going There's to be some... Very time. interesting news this week. Very some some cool things, but some very interesting things as well. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. So let's just hit that intro, and we'll get we'll get rolling as we do. Intro Reno. <laughs> Wrong intro. That's okay. I actually switched the transition to the intro, so that's gonna be the intro for this episode, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> No, it's supposed to be the transition. Oh man, you gotta you gotta use that again when we go to the news. Now. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, All right. Okay. So. Well, hello everyone. It is the twenty eighth day of June. We are halfway through the year. This is week twenty six of of the year. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. Um, it's it's top clack. Top clack's always a good time. Um, let's just roll into into life. Brian, how's your week been? Week is good. Um, some ups and downs, but but you know doing doing well. Got a lot of fun things in for mail call to talk about. Yeah, as they say, life is life is a roller coaster. Um, yeah, or a box of chocolates. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> or it's Mr. Bones's wild ride. Oof. I don't Oof. even know what that is. It's okay. <laughs> um, let's just, yeah, let's, we, have, we have a lot to talk about, so let's just head straight into the mail call. Um, and yeah. it's a cool mail call today because, as you guys might have noticed, I have a new camera, and I am trying out a new microphone. Um, so that's a thing. Hopefully, I sound at least okay. I'm pretty sure I don't sound as nice as, you know, the big boy adult microphone. But I hope I at least sound decent still with the lab. I just want to try it out. Uh, I'll be listening to it after as well. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't know if I'll permanently switch to it. But I'll be using it for videos and stuff. You guys might even see some exciting A-roll footage of, of the man of interests in future videos. <gasps> oh, my gosh. TB. Yeah. Um, I, I got one as well. So I will be, I'll be um, using that for some A-roll as well. So it should be pretty cool. So, Huey, what did you get this week? Well, aside from this awesome Logitech Brio camera that I am not really taking advantage of the 4K because our windows are only so, our video windows are only so big on the screen, um, and the lav mic, I got something real cool, real cool, real cool. Uh, I got a little gift from Desk Candy that came in today. Um, here is a box, and you guys see what on the side of the box, and this the big is what picture it says on the keyboard. right here. Oof, oof. Um, top clack review unit. We will have. I will have this in my possession for a little over a week. I will be building it up tonight. I'll be streaming the build for those who may be interested in watching me build this up, Buttercup. If you know what I'm saying. And then, yeah, I'll have it for a week. I'll be taking a lot of videos, a lot of pictures. I'll be posting it on Discord throughout the week. Um, after that, I'm sending it to the next reviewer because this is a, a rotating review sample. Um, but after the whole week, I will be writing up my thoughts, my impressions, and working on a video as well. That will be coming out in the future. Um, got a nice little letter from, from John uh, about the review, which is very, very nice. I'm, I'm really excited for this. I don't know what color this review unit is. It's still, still taped up, still wrapped. I just got home and opened it 
or open the main box to find the smaller box. So I'm I'm pumped. I'm pumped. So unboxing later tonight. Yeah, mm-hmm. later tonight unboxing and build stream. So oof oof. Very very cool. All right, let's see let's see what I got. So I got I got a few. Mine's maybe not quite as interesting, but you know I still got still got some things. So uh, like Huey's uh, lapel mic, I I have one as well. Also got um, a capture card so I can start using my um, uh, camera. Hopefully, because the uh, the pluggable prototype cap card that I was using was straight up not working. Like for some reason, I don't know why, and the the guy that developed it doesn't really understand why either. So, you know, uh, going for something that's potentially more of a sure bet because this is what Huey uses, and clearly that works. So that's pretty cool. I also got some uh, some new new brushes for lubing, and I, I'm pretty happy with the size of these, by the way. And uh, what else did I get? That actually might be it. My week wasn't quite as epic as yours, Huey. Well, it was just, it was just hey, today that came in. But it's, that's... it's the little things, man. It's the little things that make me happy sometimes. <laughs> What's, brush. What, what, I'm excited to try these new brushes. For, out, for reference to other people who may be looking for lubing brushes, what sizes are those? Okay, so this these are uh, 5 slash 0. This is probably my preferred size. I forget the actual. I think it's called spotter's tip. Yeah, it's called spotter. So that's that's the actual like type of tip. This still has a little cover over it. But uh, but yeah, it looks a lot bigger on camera. It's it's actually quite small. Nice. But uh, but that's what I'm that's what I'm working with. I, I this is probably my ideal size for switches for stabs. I'd want something a little bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited to try those. Amazon link, please. Uh, ask me in Discord after the show, and I'll yes. get that for you. Yes, we we have it. Just it's yeah. It's I don't I don't want to fumble for it right now. Uh, PMS and Chicken, thank you very much for the 100 bits. Appreciate that, man. And, yeah, and uh, that... Captain Schwa also subbed earlier. Thank you so I much I did not miss that. the support. Thank you. you oh, that's 10 awesome. months in a row, by the way, of the of the Tier 1. He was an, he was an OG. OG. 10 months. He was hey, an OG. Hey, guys, I just want to incept this into your minds. But a two-year anniversary coming up um, right yeah, quick. A- August, I think, right? No, okay, well, August? technically August, well, but we celebrated in September because reasons. Okay, so, so I don't know, somewhere I don't know between one, August and September. Which one? Okay, it's, it's the it's the third week of August is our technical two year anniversary. I don't know if we plan on celebrating it on time or celebrating it top clack style and celebrating it a month later. Uh, 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 being <laughs> late, being late is very in. <laughs> It's very in style for top five, but um, but yeah, no. Either way, it should be good. If you were there last year, you know we had a lot of fun. That episode was awesome. Um, we had a bunch of different contests for people to win really, really, really cool prizes, and we we had so much giveaway stuff, and so many people entered, and it, it was it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of like contests, like song contests, poem contests, you know, Photoshop kind of contest. It was it was awesome. We're probably super, gonna do something cool. similar but more streamlined since there's gonna be a lot more entries this year. Yeah, we but kind of messed up in a lot of ways last year. We were, and it, we made, it made us work way harder than we should have. We're, so this year we'll we'll be a little bit more streamlined, but we'll still have a really good time and we'll yeah. still have some fun stuff to win. Pause all so. thank you for the one hundred bits. Woo! Near winter you too. Oof, and with that, nice, Sue. let's hit up this this new Thank segment. You. Let's get started. Um, Heck yes. Oh my god, I love that. Did you did you roll it? Okay, of course. Cool. I, I, every every that's, that's the new yay intro. Not the intro. That's the new transition thing. Um, and that intro thing is pretty awesome. Pretty it, it awesome. Is, it is pretty Indeed. darn awesome. So with that, let's head on to the news. Um, with our first news topic over from KBD Fans China site, um, is the PBTSA control code keycap set, which is a PBTSA set, but with interesting sub legends. Um, yeah. Wow, these are very interesting sub legends. Oof, that Steam escape key. <laughs> what? Is, that's, is that a thing? Does that come with it? That's pretty funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's icons for all sorts of things. Git, uh, there's a hashtag, there's a Reddit symbol. The Slack that's, one. That's kind of interesting. Oh, that is Slack, yeah. 
Wow. Uh, where's where's the Discord love? <laughs> Can't buy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, very interesting. I like the colors. They're they're pretty mundane. Pretty much what you'd expect from uh, a basic set. Um, uh, sub legends aren't really doing it for me, but I think it's interesting. If nothing else, I I really like the sub legends. Actually, I I I definitely consider this to be for a display board. I I wouldn't use okay. an orange space bar. I'd use an alpha colored space yeah. bar because like. Ew. Access yeah. space bars, right? But um, yeah, no, I. So yeah. I'd use it without any colored accents. Um. All right. Well, it's it's currently in stock right now for seventy four dollars, down from a whopping seventy five dollars. <laughs> Get that full one dollar savings, apparently. Yeah. But uh, the price does seem pretty good for the compatibility that you get. So you you actually get enough to do any any like basic reasonable board. Um, you know, you, you got your 1.5 U Legends, you have your uh, short shifts, and uh, a plethora of other things, stepped caps locks. So pretty good compatibility for a $74 SA set, actually, if I'm being totally honest. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dig that. They, which is dead, basically a dead website now. But um, let's move on to something that is not dead, but instead revived and even revitalized, which is the new Kono site, which is hosting... Our next topic, the GMK Triumph Adler 90 keycap set, which for it's it's a it's a top class must buy. Like let's we're putting it out here right now. Like yeah, we need to get like a, a must buy, um, not transition screen obviously, but just like a stamp that will go on on the screen. Like this is a this is a GMK Ooh. Triumph Adler 90. It's a must buy. Brian and I we're both this, gonna be getting one um, because get, like get how how can you not come come on? It looks too good, man. That's too classic. Come on. The only bad thing is definitely the price is a bit high. 170 US um, for just the base. And if you want to icon it up, that's another $40. So, you know. And I do want to. Uh. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah. A little a little higher than we've seen for um, this, this amount of GMK caps. Not terrible, but, you know, not amazing either. But, yeah. you know, sometimes, sometimes that's how it goes. There are a lot of cool compatibility options, though. There is a Nord kit. You have your, what I think is a really interesting-looking Rose Zero numpad kit. Um, there's your spacebar kit if you're, like, you know, one of those people that uses really obscure spacebars. And, of course, like Huey said, the Icon kit, which I like a lot. I'm a big fan of Icon mods. But, uh, yeah, this is this is a must-buy. Maybe I'll even run the, the Quirks layout. YOLO. I, 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 won't, I, I, won't, I won't use it like that, but I'll, no. I'll, I'll put the no. caps on no. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I think a big thing a lot of people think now is, you know, comparing this to when the original Triumph ad there ran on Mass Drop, because that was like, that was like a hundred bucks. That was cheap. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. Yeah, I that think... was like the first, like super major epic like huge scale gmk group buy that i remember when uh, i was a little bit newer yeah that was definitely the, the one that really kick-started off um low price gmk that people have slowly become more comfortable with and this is kind of like a you know the reverse side of that here's a you know really really pricey but great gmk set it's open yeah. until end of july basically july 27th estimated shipping december um, what do you think about this colors versus the original one? Because that's kind of like the back and forth for a lot of people. Because a lot of people originally didn't take on that much to the original one, but I feel like it's almost kind of had like a resurgence because there's nothing else like it until. I now. mean, this this is pretty close to the original, right? I mean, sorry, not the original, but the mash up one, the first, the mash Okay, one. this is definitely quite a bit different then. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, that was one problem that people had originally with the the previous run of this. It was, the colors were very different. Uh, I believe the alphas were like significantly lighter, like almost closer to white instead of instead of like a more of a gray, like a light gray, like it is now, which I like a lot more. And I think the uh, the blue on the mods were were also a bit lighter, if I recall. It's been a while since I've seen uh, like the 2014 version of this set or whatever, but uh, I think this is significantly better. And not that the last set was bad, but it was not true to the Triumph Adler like OG colorway. So this is definitely an homage to the past, and that's really cool. IMO. 
right before we move on to our next topic, Brian, what color keyboard are you using to set on? Hmm. That's a question. That's a question. I how, can't. I can't answer. How that about you, chat? Right while we transition to the next topic, let me know what color keyboard would you use? You know, this gray and blue with, because it's it's really unique. It's really awesome, and it's got the top clack seal of Yesarino. Yeah. This this mute they're the um what else? the silver and something meteor that they have it rendered on or I don't know if that's a render or not I'm imagining it is but uh, I think that looks stellar so maybe maybe something kind of like a light gray silver dark silver kind of kind of thing going on there mm -hmm. let's move on to our next topic for the day which is Jim K Oasis Group by on our other partner site a novel keys dot x y z or z or that's actually the only two ways to pronounce it but here is gmk oasis group by we have the base at 145 and different kits we got the coffee kit kobe kit space bar kit and of course you can get some rama aluminum keys for the x's and the o's um if you're mm. all about that life so a big thing i'm really really happy about that they introduced was coffee mods awesome awesome bit pricey to be honest hundred dollars for a lot of mods but it's great compatibility i'm not going to lie i am not the biggest fan of the blue for the base of oasis if i do get this i would get the bait i would have to get the base coffee and kobe and you might be asking Huey, why not wow. just coffee and kobe because kobe is alphas and coffee is mods because if you get Kobe, you're still missing out on the 7U space bar. And if you get the space bar kit, there's no 7U alpha space bar. The only 7U alpha space bar is in the base kit. Interesting. Which for me is a bit of a shame because I'd rather, if I could, go coffee, Kobe, space bar. Rather than base, coffee, Kobe. Yeah. Hmm. The uh, the price for just the base kit is uh, is pretty reasonable, 145 bucks. Nowadays, that seems well within the standard range of GMK group by pricing, um, especially for this kind of compatibility. You're getting quite a bit here. Uh, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna contest Huey here. I think the blue of the base kit is actually nicer to me than the coffee. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that because it's different. I like different. Anyways, uh, this group I will run until July 28th, so you got pretty much exactly a month to uh, decide if you want this or not. And, uh, yeah. Heck yeah. I just I just gotta ask, is Japanese Double Shot Only Legends going to be one of the big things until the end of the year for all GMK sets? Because like, I don't think that was the original game plan for this set, even, as far as I remember. And now it's like, yeah. here's a Kobe kit because. But now, yeah, now the now the GMK well. molds are made, so like everyone wants to use it, and that's that's cool. Honestly, I I think it's a cool addition. Um, I I don't think it fits with a lot of sets, but I think it fits with some, and just having the option is kind of nice, one way or the other. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys What do you guys in chat think about it? Kobe Legends, Japanese Mono Legends. I think they look pretty good. Yeah. You know what? When I think of the coffee set and the Kobe, like, Tokyo Coffee Nerd comes to mind. He's, oh, I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder That's why. fantastic. Um, yeah, check out the set when you get a chance. It's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm more of the coffee than the Oasis. I can understand what Brian said. It's 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 different. I like I like the variety. Yes. Speaking of variety, let's move on to a little bit of variety in top clock. We don't cover XDA too much, but here's an interest check for an XDA by KBD fans, which is the interest check for Belafonte keycaps, a quote life aquatic inspired key sets. So obviously they're they're going for the life aquatic with Steve Zissou, uh kind of theme here, which is is kind of a you know as as they pointed out here a nautical themed key set. 
it's based on the ship Belafonte. Um, not sure how I feel about these colors. Hold I think on. they're okay. Whoa, for the modifiers, there's no s normal blue mod colored enter. It's only the yellow and orange. Come on. Well, that's that's a fail. Come on. There's there's also no normal escape. Oof, this is interest check. So so wow. so so some tell them okay. some tell them this, these are crucial crucial things that that have happened. Yeah, that's um. In fact, there, as I'm looking through it now, even in the kits, there are no normal enter or normal escape keys. Oof. That's 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 gonna that's gonna get my my top clack fail. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fail until for, it's for fixed. now. Yeah, for now, because yeah, you can't like it's always cool to have extra options, but. I don't know, man. It's it's tough because you get so many clashing color themes depending on what you use it with. Uh, if you're forced to use the accent colors, so yeah, not not a big fan of, of being forced into that personally. But you know, what do we what do we think of the colorway? I would use it just the whites and the blues. Yeah, I, I would. I would too. I think. Yeah. I'd have to see the orange to decide if I'd want to use the enter escape orange. That that mustard is gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard pass for me for this set though. Yeah, the mustard ketchup mustard kind of thing going on. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the novelties are kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. I love the beanie. Yeah, the beanie is pretty cool. The beanie um, and the north, south, west, east is. Where it's at. Yeah. Oof. Like, hello there, baby feeps, and thank you for the ten months in a row for Twitch Prime sub. You are you are up there with some of the OGs, other OGs with you. Thank you so much for yeah the sub right now. Yeah, I think ten months is is the the most you can possibly have right now, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe eleven. I think we started it in. Yeah. It was either August or September. Yeah, we started in. It was like the first week of sept i believe or end of august i don't know but i'm pretty sure 10 is the longest because i haven't seen anyone at 11 so yeah yeah um, um this is a set this is an interest check so we should we should we should have people pester kbd fans like give us give us all normal mod colored mods like that enter that escape come on yep. come on we're, we're so, those so fans. they they have a little google form after all the pictures where you can go and uh you know show your interest and in, and uh, you know, show any kind of uh, changes you might wanna wanna see. Yeah. So, so if if this is something you're interested in, then uh, make sure you do that. Just and... fill in that form right now and say, like, hey, Top Clack said you guys gotta have a normal enter and escape. You know what I'm saying? And they'll be like, oh, Top Clack said that. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be like, screw those guys. Those guys have no <laughs> idea what they're talking about. Accents for life, yo. Should never use anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I've always had really positive conversations with people from kbd fans they're, they're they're usually very open to to advice and stuff like that so pretty cool pretty let's cool. move on to another yes. key set that is uh going to be in group by format very shortly in fact just one week away yes. this is sa green screen which uh, is posted by Ablotsky, but he was not the only one working on it. There were other people, and I can't remember off the top of my head who it was, to be honest, and I apologize for that. But anyways, it's uh, apparently a green screen-inspired key set. Yes. There's a lot of green there. There's a lot of Vim going on there. You have like some Vim accents and uh, you know arrows. So maybe if that's your thing, then uh, this is definitely for you. I'm going to be totally honest. I don't really like the colorway at all. No, no, it's not for me, to be perfectly not, honest. Not um, doing it for me either. Yeah, it's 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 not for me. Uh, but I like the idea of the theme. But like thinking of like a green screen, like actually, someone give me the blue screen a death key set. <laughs> it's always kind of nice to get um, more key sets on the market that have colors that aren't really used anywhere else. Um, green is is something that. 
Uh, I'd say until recently, at least, the community was kind of lacking. I think you know, it was... It was we had a couple yeah, out. because Royal Alpha TA did poorly, but then suddenly it's like everyone, everyone just got super hard about it, and everyone was like, oh, I got it. And then Terminal did phenomenal, and Round 2 is a thing. It's probably doing well. Coniferous also did pretty Coniferous, well. And Coniferous is going to have a Round 2 as well. It's definitely popular uh, enough to warrant that, so that's going to be coming camp, in the future. Camping, camping did good as well. It's, that's going to be... So, so green, people are obviously wanting green, because it's something, it's something different, you know. Until recently, we didn't really have that many green key sets. DCS so, green something. tea, baby. Oh. <laughs> playing with my heartstrings there, Huey. So, you know, you know the, I, it's like. not super much for us, you know, the green. How about the... There's there's the amber screen alphas, which I think actually is a bit better. I'm not sure if I'm truly feeling it. I want to see full render on full keyboards. We shall see. Orange, I think, yeah. is better, though. Hmm... It's like it's yeah, like, I think I, I think I agree with that. It's like when I played Fallout New Vegas. I don't I don't want the green, Pit Boy UI. I want the orange amber one. Come on, that's 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 the way to go. Anyone who's played Fallout knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, but oh, there are renders. We... Corner of Lost. I need to find them then. Oh, there's there's oh, one. Hold on, wait. He sent oh, me okay. a there's, there's another album. Okay, there we go. Okay, this look good. It looks better now. There we go. I was looking at the first one okay uh h9 h919 thank you for the 10 bits by the way a solid black board is what you need for this for for either the amber or the green i think that's just yeah. how, how, how it has to be how it has to be i'd agree with that looks I mean, it looks looks fine i'm still not really sold on the colors but that's just because I've never really been kind of a, a green, a green kind of kind of guy for keyboards. But I definitely get the appeal, and the key set looks like it's laid out pretty well. So that is cool. So that'll be hitting mass drop on the fifth. So you'll be able to get more information about it then. I'm sure we'll bring it up next episode because that's yeah. the day it launches. Yeah. So. So yeah, look look forward to that. Oof, crazy people people sink in launches with with top pack. I like it. Oh, th that's how it should be. Oof. I, sh I should be able to wake up and browse for news, and like everything should be new, <laughs> like for Top Clock that that day. That would just be fantastic. Okay, speaking of something, <laughs> some people might think of fantastic or fantastically gaudy is our next topic, which is the <laughs> Moyen ninety six key. Um, yeah. So this is this is pretty polarizing. Um, um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, let's that, first hey, that connector. Okay, let's, let's first talk about the looks. Let's talk about the looks. Okay. So this is. Um... Am I like? Am I? Am I back playing World of Warcraft in 2008? <laughs> raiding molten core because that's what I see. I, I'm I'm in molten core. I'm I got I got 39 other people. We synced our schedules. We're about to <laughs> about to hit. We're, we're about, I'm about to pull for Ragnaros. That's what's about to happen. That's what that's why that's why I see when I see the Moyen ninety six. It's it's it is a lava inspired design, which is <laughs> like, which is strange, but I mean it's kind of cool in its own way too. It's unique. Um, I do appreciate that. Um, it, I I I think it, it maybe could look a little bit more subtle. This is this is pretty out there, but I guess you know there is an audience for that. Um, what is also very extreme is the price. So five hundred and twenty-three dollars U.S. Um, that does apparently get you uh, switches with it. So I imagine it's it's a built keyboard. I'm not sure if it comes with the key set itself. Uh, that was something I was trying to find, but I couldn't quite find it in the post. So I mean, I guess if it's like a fully assembled thing and it has what looks to be GMK or at least Cherry profile keycaps in general um that that is that is kind of cool and there's definitely some merit and value in that but 523 is, is kind of a lot but it's basically a full um, kit right you get, you get everything you can in theory together. yeah in theory yes um yeah you, you have your choice but, of colors uh lot. lava red or thunder blue depending on you know how uh how nerdy you are 
Um, your your switch type options though are pretty limited. You get cherry switches: RGB red, RGB blue, RGB brown, and RGB black. So pretty limited there, which is kind of a bummer. You should have a choice to you know say no to switches in general, or at least have a larger selection. Um, this okay. They also do something here, and I don't know if let's, this is just talk a about the cable public thing. Actually, let's talk about the cable okay. real quick because hold, hold, the cable. Hold on, is... no, I want to bring something up okay, with the okay. price stuff okay, because price. this bothers me every time I see it. So this is five hundred twenty-two dollars <laughs> marked down from seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and bet this never retailed ever for seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. This is the first time we're seeing this keyboard. It was not originally seven hundred ninety nine dollars, and, and look, Amazon is really guilty of this too. Because what they'll do is they'll they'll artificially inflate the price, and then slash it to make it look like there's a sale, even though it's the normal price. That drives me nuts. Um, I really wish people, especially in the keyboard community, do not do that. So I, I am bummed out that I see that because that's that's just silly. Five hundred twenty three, yeah. Anyways, to you. So I'm going to talk about this cable, cable, okay? This is a magnetic data interface. It's a proprietary magnetic cable. Um, interesting. Magnetic cables, I think, are awesome, have a great potential in the community, but are very basically non-standard. They're using, like, their own thing. Like, eh, well. Which means, basically, you have an issue with, with this cable. Where are we getting replace it, replacements? Basically, yeah. just from them, if they even decide to stock it, or if someone else you starts making keyboards for these. Yeah, or, how bad would that be? Like, you, somehow your cable gets messed up, and you just you, you can't get anything else, and that's it. Your board is now useless. I mean, I doubt that would be the case. Like, they'll probably no, have if, extras yeah, or something. If, but like, it's it's annoying to think about even. It's annoying to think it's not like a super common standard, or something that is in the process of being adopted, like USB C. Like USB C, you can get a magnetic one, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm still really interested to see if this comes with keycaps at all because that really can affect the value here. I don't know, dude. I, I've read over this like four times now, and I I can't find There's it. There's a carbon so. plate. Okay, carbon carbon plate, proprietary connector, lots of interesting lava designs throughout. <sighs> yeah. And uh, a, a fairly hefty price tag. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see how that goes. I'd be very curious to see how that group buy does. I'd honestly, be, I'd be very curious if they'd be willing to give me a review sample. <laughs> I I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh... It is. Well, we may not know about here. that, but we know about our next topic, which I have one right next to me, actually, which is going to be the modern M0110. It is a thing. It is real. A lot. It was first teased in person to the to a large general public um, at the NorCal meetup where Brian and I both tried it almost a year ago now. Um, yeah. Very exciting. Actually, it's not it's like, so, like six months ago, but still. Um, yeah, seven months ago. It was November, yeah, seven months. But hey, uh, it was it was a really cool product, and uh, you know it's been teased and it's been an IC basically like for a long time now, and supposedly it's finally happening. Group I should be starting very very soon. It starts tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so Group I Group I starts tomorrow. I imagine you'll be able to get it through uh, this site directly, or are they running it through any proxies? Nope, they're they, they, they they're running it. Okay, handling it themselves. So a lot of people have been looking forward to this. It's uh, another homage to the past, obviously, of the original Apple M0110, which was uh, a wildly popular board, a lot for this aesthetics especially. So we're definitely getting that here. And um, when I checked out the prototype in November, seven months ago, it was pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. So hopefully uh, the one that you got is also pretty freaking sweet or better. And we'll get some more information on this soon. And of course, uh, like Huey mentioned earlier, he will be building it later tonight. Yes. Prob probably on stream. Uh, coin toss. Flipping, flipping coins. Uh, Either way, sent, more info soon on it. I forgot to say, it also just sent me a box that just says add ons. So, huh. That's a thing. I, you'll have to tell me what's in that box. <laughs> Hopefully, the good stuff. 
But yeah, I'm gonna go to the winch tonight. Um, let's let's just talk about the the theme of the case because technically they were beat to market because the red scarf um, M zero one one zero clone has already shipped actually. Um, and that yeah, was, was... Like two eighty five, I believe, for a kit. Um, yeah, that that was one that ran on Master Up, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think the, the the big thing is how will how will this stack up? And I think yeah. I think this will stack up pretty well because I'm I'm quite familiar with red scarf quality. Yeah, I would argue this is going to be an overall better product, most likely. Uh, I also prefer the looks of this one a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like the case state, states there, it is manufactured in the U.S. So that has me a little scared on what the price could be. So obviously, when you choose to not outsource that kind of machining to China, um, it is usually more expensive. So it'll be kind of cool to see how much this is. Hopefully, it's not outrageous. I have like this like sinking fear that it's going to be like four hundred and fifty dollars, and we then will... I just I won't even like I won't yeah, even we'll be able to like, consider it. We'll find out really soon. Um, Cyber Sam, thank you for three months in a row of that Twitch Prime, by the way. Yeah, I'm excited to build mine after the stream. You know, they sent me... They actually sent me parts, including, like, a PCB. And, like, they sent me everything to, like, to build, technically, except for Switches, which I have myself. And they also sent me a built... I believe they also sent me a built plate. One of the built plates that you see in the album, in case I want to use theirs. But I listened to their typing sounds. They uploaded typing sounds the other day. And their stabs need work. So I think I will enjoy the building of it myself. Cool. Uh, yeah. And be surfer, thank you very much for the ten months in a row with Twitch Prime. Appreciate that, man. Double digits, heck yeah. Uh, Fizzkey is saying this is going to cost three ten, according to uh, the uh, the designer. So if so, that's that's really good because this is this is a big case. This is a big metal case. There's a lot of design work there, um, a lot of metal being used, and it's being made in the U.S. So if you can get the price down to three ten, I think that's that's pretty reasonable. Sorry, I've been sneezing everyone. I'm, like, slowly dying. I'm trying not to. But... Well, we all are, but some faster and slower than the others. Yeah. So, keep keep your eye out, everyone. Tomorrow, it's going to be it's gonna be big, you know? 12 <laughs> says 310 down from 799. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I hope that's, like, kind of like the new meme. Because that, that makes me laugh every time, whatever, whatever website does that. <laughs> So actually, I I want to know from from you guys in chat, you know, what makes or breaks this keyboard for you? Is it just gonna be based off price that you're gonna say yes or no, or are there other fa other factors you're considering? Whether it's the bezels, or it's the look, like what what is the whole the whole shebang for you? For me, I think it's gonna be the down to the price because I want it. Yeah, um, I I also would like one uh, if it's affordable enough. So that'd be that'd be cool. I'd like that. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. moving on in the in the interest of time. Speaking of things people really really want, um, surprisingly even for Ryan Norbauer who is running the Norba Touch Round Pi um, three point one four one five, which is just more cases for the Nova Touch and other TKLs that fit that aren't produced anymore. Um, People wanted this so bad. He's like, hey, these haven't been in production for, like, over a year. Do you guys still really want cases for these? And resoundingly, yeah. the enthusiast population said yes. Um, yeah, well, I mean, there are still Nova Touches flying around, and not only Nova Touches, but uh, Quickfire Rapids, one of the most popular TKLs in, in the market for the longest time before they were discontinued. So, I mean, there's, there's tons of them floating around, and... Um, like the Quickfire Rapids in particular are pretty cheap. Like you can find them for like forty bucks, like secondhand, forty fifty bucks. Drop that right into a uh, a no Norba Touch case. Yeah. So pretty would cool. recommend. Would recommend Ryan Norbauer. Fantastic individual. He has very high standards for quality, high standards for life. Um, I would trust him with my money, and I have multiple times, and I will continue to do so. Um, as you should. As you should. And if you have a Nova Touch or thinking about getting one and you want just the best case you could possibly get for a Nova Touch, 
This is this is the path to go. Also, he did tease um, elsewhere slightly that um, he's going to be having his tactical bags available in the near future. We'll be covering those a bit more once he has a bit more rolling out about that. Just want to bring that up. Yep. So this group I is running until July 13th. So you got about two weeks left before uh, this ends. The link there is in the Geek Hack post, so make sure you check that out if that's something you are interested in. Yes, sirree. And let's move on to our next, which is a teaser. Yeah, so this this is pretty cool. I, I saw this the other day. Um, Percent Studio, now on Instagram. Percent, you probably know from projects like the Skog TKL, the Canoe, that's 65% board that everyone's pretty much been loving. There's some pictures here as well. Um, if you take a look at, at least on the page right now, the bottom left and bottom right pictures, um, you'll notice something kind of interesting. This is a new board. This is unreleased. He's calling it the Skog Light. So it's kind of like maybe like a slightly smaller profile TKL. You know, he's got some buttons crammed down a little bit, but I think that's more to accommodate for logo and lights. But um, in... Uh, one of the posts, at least the bottom right one, has multiple pictures in it, and one of them has a side angle. And it's a little bit more compact. It's not quite like a super beefy TKL that we're used to seeing. So this is definitely something on the smaller scale, thus the light in the name. And I think it looks really cool, actually. I'm very curious to see exactly how it's mounted. I, I'm a big fan of this. This is this is different enough for me. I'm I'm I mix. I like the idea, but like Huang Vu and Chad Swimming, like you can't line up the profiles. That doesn't work because the nav clusters are moved down. So when oh. you look on the side of that board, those won't. That that is not even even remotely close to a deal breaker for me personally. But I could see how if you were like super duper OCD about that, then yes, maybe. I I think the design kind of makes up for it though. This is very unique, and I'm I'm a I'm a big fan here. But I, I think it's, at this point, a very signature idea and design for percent. Because you can match colors really easily with the notched area and for the plates. Mm -hmm. um, easy color color matching back and forth between top and bottom sides. So I think I think it's going to do well. You know, the, yep. the, the uh, percent has been doing well with the uh, canoe. So. Yeah, the canoe has been very popular. The, the Skog, uh, maybe not quite as popular, but apparently the, I've, people are saying the Skog is an awesome board as well. So I, I'm definitely looking forward to the Skog Lights. Oblosky is saying it is going to be top-mounted, so bam, thumbs up to that. It's cool to get top-mounted in um, kind of a, a smaller profile there. Yeah. It... yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of digs um, that people have, people dig modifying switches, doing different things. But now Novakies has paired up with Imba Club, so you don't have to mod switches yourself. Here are the Hawker Royal switches, a collab between the Imba Club and the Novakies. We got some black bottom housings, which look dope AF, as all the cool kids say. One save gaming, thank you for the 100 bits, by the way. Um, yeah, we're looking at a 55 cents per switch. Um, very interesting combination. You know, we got the Hako stem, the Royal Leaf, which is the thicker leaf. You got a round, smooth bump that has some yeah. a little bit of sharpness to it. It's interesting mix. I'm getting some in very soon. Yes, Nine, we... Yeah, we're, we're both getting them either like tomorrow or the next day, I believe. Um, so definitely looking out for these. Um, if, if you're one of those people that thought Hako switches might not have been tactile enough for you or tactile in the way that you wanted, these might be the answer to that because these are effectively just more tactile Hako switches with a more perceivable bump um, because of that thicker or larger leaf from the Box Royal switch. So this will be this will be really cool to test out. Uh, pretty start to get these in. I'll probably do a build with them right away. Um, Sim. Maybe even Saturday if I get them by then, which I might. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Really cool. Definitely looking forward to this. Oof. oof, 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 oof. Yeah, check it out when you get a chance. And you know what? Check out other things on Novel Keys because they're one of our beautiful sponsors. Um, I mean, yes. beautiful because like go to the, go to the T-shirt that Brian's wearing and look at Mike's face. He's actually a beautiful person, and that's what I mean when he's, they're a beautiful sponsor. <laughs> um, check out Novel Keys. They're the box royals. They have these new Hawker Royal switches. They have awesome desk mats. Check it out when you get a chance. They're one of our favorite um, sponsors for sure. Even though we love all of our sponsors, but Mike's an absolutely great guy. Promo code top clack two words. 
Um, if you want to get 5% off any order, you order from Novel Keys. Also, GMK Oasis, it's a thing. Yep, and uh, SA Kobayashi is still going on. Uh, the Novellia's pre-order is still going on. So uh, Novel Keys making making waves right now. They're doing a lot of big things, and we are we are yeah. proud to be partnered with them. Yeah. And by the way, the, his shirts are like absurdly comfortable. Like this is this is kind of otherworldly, to be totally honest. So you should you should probably just buy one next time you're ordering from Novel Keys. Who's next, Ryan? Um, we also have ZealPC.net, who I I believe he he actually changed his name not too long ago, right? It's Zeal Generations now, right? I think that's like is that the, what it is? The, the top level company. Oh, it's Hopefully, Zeal Generations. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what he what he actually goes by, but I remember he told us that recently. So I I, I apologize if it's now Zeal Generation. I've been calling it Zeal PC, but either way, Zeal, awesome guy, known for doing sweet tactile switches. Zealios, which have been popular in the community for years, um, very smooth, nice tactile switches with those all clear housings and purple sliders, which people really dig. I'm a big fan of the Telios myself because I'm more of a linear kind of guy, and you get those Tiffany blue stems because you know. Uh, bling bling even color matched it like color matched tiffany product like unreal anyways yes look forward to that i believe um round 12 is going to be starting soon and silent telios are on the horizon so keep a look out for those i'll be i'll be waiting for those i definitely need some of those in my life yes moving on we have the beast in the east z frontier hopping it up being probably the absolutely best asian proxy for key sets in the world, you know, Burgundy, Oasis, TA90, Terminal, Round 2. If you're in Asia, you need some GMK, you need some JTK, hit them up, you know. Um, I'm actually getting pristine very soon. Uh, they also have a ton of JTK, which is absolutely great. See Frontier, they're wonderful. Yeah. And very soon, Cat and Cam Profiles will be a same thing very soon. They've been working on that and developing that with um, other designers in China. And eventually, once those are ready, those will also be sold to the Western markets. So, bam, 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 Z Frontier, keep that in mind. Yep, last but not least, we have Input Club, who runs Kono.store, which just very, very, very recently got a little facelift if you go to that site now. And uh, it, it's it's looking nice. I actually like the layout they have now a lot better because if I'm being totally honest, previously I thought everything was way too big on the site. The pictures, the text, everything, and you had to scroll forever to like look at stuff. This is a, a lot more compact, a little bit easier to browse, and I really dig that. They got a lot of cool new things coming out. They got the Hex Gears X1 wireless low profile, which sounds kind of cheesy, but to be totally honest, I kind of want one just so I can lay in bed and use it for like... Actually, the reason you should Media use Center. one, Brian, you should use one, desolder the switches, and get some um, Novel Keys Jade chalk switches. Oh, that's that's pretty next that's level. That's next I'm gonna, level. I'm going to see if I can have, let's see if I can con Input Club into sending me one of these. Same. To review or something. But hey, I would Kono, totally review this. Kono store, everyone. Check them out. Um, we got GMK Triumph Battle 90, DSA Mystery. Um, we got Tr Trouble Minds, you got some Plague, you got a lot of things in the pipeline. Yep, and you can the, you can, uh, yeah. can pre-order the Kira still too, which is really cool. So I will I will I will I will drop a I'll drop a teaserino. They are working on things, and the things they are working on will require Hot Dog to show up on Top Clack in the future for information. That's pretty cool. So you know oh, you know yeah. some really epic mad science is happening then. And uh, we're very appreciative of that. So thank you to all of our sponsors. And of course, thank you to you, the viewer, for helping us out. Thank you to all the subs. Thank you to all the bits. And with that, we will do our little transition screen. I'll switch my insert waiting slash transition here while we dial in our guest for today. Give me a moment. Do, 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 do. Are you adding mm -hmm. him? I am. Okay. Hey, guys. Perfect. Hello, hello, hello. Mr. Mike Honcho, also known as Jason of The Key Company. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing absolutely Man wonderful. Freaking-tastic. So, for those of you that might not know... You can you give us just a little bit of a backstory on who you are, like what got you into keyboards, and you know where you have come in oh, such a long way? Sure. Give me one second. Oh, okay, there we go. I had a, 
and some reverb going on. So me, I got into keyboards. Uh, I don't even remember what year it was. I think the first one I ever had was one of those Daz keyboards. I'm sure you guys all remember that. Um, I like the look of just the plain black keys, so I sprung on one. I spent, it's like I couldn't believe I spent $100 on a keyboard, you know? And then, um, I don't know, Reddit brought me down the rabbit hole, and then one thing led to another, and now I've got mountains of keyboards and you know I'm developing products and just uh, really like the community I think that's the biggest thing everybody's so friendly and helpful well at one point we were second behind makeup addiction for most positive subreddit oh hey not bad man I mean, which, not- which which I thought was we've since dropped like quite a bit <laughs> yeah. as, as hey. we grow unfortunately but uh, I mean it's good that there's growth I mean the more people that are in the community um, the more people that can get in on group buys and bring things to market, and you see more innovation happening. And I mean, you guys remember when you first jumped in, you know, back when, uh, like you were mentioning, uh, Triumph Elder and its first run. And back then, it was, you know, if you didn't jump on a group buy, you had to pay just buku cash to get it online on Mech Market. And yeah. now it's it's a totally different. I mean, there's three group buys going on a week. I mean, there's two group buys. There's gonna be two group buys in July with almost the same theme. You know, so, I mean, it happens, you know, um, but it's good. It's growing. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about uh, the key company, the company that you run, and what you represent, basically, with this uh, vendor. Well, when uh, I first started off with um, Uncle Broody, I don't know, a lot of you guys know him. I know Huey knows him personally. He's um, an OG. Yeah, we decided, we said, you know what we want to do? We want to run a group by for this idea we got because we came up with Terminal. And what we wanted to set ourselves apart with was back then there wasn't a lot of big companies doing this. There was mass drop and then there was a lot of group buys that were organized by just, you know, just a dude in his apartment or something like that. And uh, people were still a little afraid to put their money up on, on, on these things, things like that. So we said, let's do this legit. Let's get an LLC. Let's get a solid website. Let's get a bank account, tax ID, all that good stuff. And let's bring some solid products to market. And that people want to buy and make them feel comfortable sending us their money. And that's what we did. I think we did a pretty good job of it. I mean, there were some bumps in the road when we first launched with uh, you know, with customer service emails, um, shipping things internationally, receiving international shipments, things like that. I mean, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things you don't anticipate when you get into this. But I think we've worked them out. And now um, Brian stepped away. He runs a business, um, another business that's his primary gig, and it's been – it was very busy for him, so he stepped away, and it's just me now. But I've got a whole handful of guys that I work with very closely that help me develop products. Uh, I bounce ideas off of them. They're incredibly helpful. Um, and now it, we're getting out of the, the, the key caps um, and trying to break into some new markets. You know, We had the TKC 1800. That was my vision for just uh, an affordable, custom-looking keyboard that someone could buy and put together because you know, a lot of them were prohibitively expensive and um, there wasn't a lot of full size on the market. And and now we're going to be launching um, probably in the fall our first aluminum custom. And we've got some other things that works too. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Blind Assassin 111, if you guys know him from his Nexus slider, he's a real sharp kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a great project, by the way. Shout yeah. out to him. He's brilliant. He comes up with some really good ideas. And uh, right now we're working on something um, – He's designing it, and I'm trying to figure out how to make it work, um, how to bring it to life, really. But I think if it happens, it's gonna it's gonna shake the mech world up pretty good. I think we'll all be pretty excited about it. Okay, okay. Can you, can you give any teasers about? This? Okay, I'll give you a hint. See that giant white keyboard sitting back there? Mm. Beam spring. I like it. Interesting. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. So I I have a question. So as, as as you you know originally with um, with Uncle Brody, eventually you know started uh, the key company. As you said, you know I, I'm kind of familiar. A lot of a lot of small businesses, a lot of startup ventures always have a lot of hiccups. Brian and I are very familiar with that starting top clock up and you know getting top clock is big and bigger and bigger and bigger. For you, was what what was one one thing that really stood out as a big obstacle when you first started out that you might think other people who may be interested in trying to do the same thing will also encounter? Well. If you're planning on running a group buy, one of the biggest things is, especially when you're importing from uh, Germany, it's one thing. With China, it's a whole other animal. Um, it's a lot more difficult, in my opinion. Um, all the hidden costs. You know, when you, people will uh, run a group buy for a product. They'll get their, their costs 
points from their supplier, and then they'll come up with an idea of how much it's going to cost to sell. And maybe maybe they'll take into consideration PayPal fees and things like that. And what they don't think about is, well, you got to hire a customs broker to get your stuff through the border, and that can be really expensive. You might have to pay duty if it's coming from China. Um, bubble wrap can get expensive. You know, things like that. Um, so hidden costs and not anticipating them properly can really put a hamper on things. Um, but other than that, I mean, just the legalese stuff, I mean, if you don't want to hire a lawyer, um, I'm fortunate enough to have a dear friend who is one, so he's helped me out a lot with the paperwork. Um, you know, there's just always going to be things like if you're going to start a group buy or start a business, do your homework, you know, read up, talk to other business owners. Um, anybody who wants to run a, a group buy, if you're ever got questions, feel free to, you know, send me an email. I'm, I'm always happy to help people in the community. I mean, I got a lot of help from um, Leandrin when we ran Terminal the first time. He gave me just a wealth of information to get started. And then uh, Thesis Camper was extremely helpful, um, just answering questions from the, based on their experiences in, in running these kind of things. Other than that, I mean, there's no major obstacles. I mean, just come up with a great idea, be innovative, you know, launch your your ICs, listen to the community. Uh, don't be afraid to be different, you know. Um, that's what people want, you know. Either, it's, either people are going to love it or they're going to hate it. And when you get negative feedback, you just got to, you know, and that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Not to sound like Forrest Gump or anything. <laughs> no, that's, that's sorry. A... sorry, guys. My wit is just at, like, a low right now. So. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, no, that's 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 some good advice actually. That's that's like it's so basic, but people often overlook things like that, or they get tied up in you know negativity or you know some kind of hate mail or whatever. So it's definitely definitely good to hear hear uh, someone experienced talk about how it really is. So yeah. let's uh, let's talk about some of the products that you have going on at um, the key company. So like, what are your, what are your your kind of flagship products right now? What are you most proud of? What are you working on? What's coming out soon? Well, I mean, Terminal is a huge seller. Um, right now, we've been live just over 24 hours, and the base kit is already over 50% of MOQ. I mean, wow. they are, literally, the Great. orders are just flying in. Thank you, everybody. I, we, this wouldn't happen without you. And I, I think this time around, we made some nice improvements. Um, but flagship-wise, I think right now, the thing I put the most heart and soul into is the TK1800. I don't know if you guys have got your, had a chance to look at one in person. Um, it took me forever, lots of headaches to make that thing work. Lots of uh, every single one of those keyboards, to all you owners out there, went through the, all, off that workbench and got cut, polished, you know, uh, buffed, packaged all by me by hand. Um, I put a lot of love into it, and I think it's innovative. I mean, it's using basically we're using reclaimed materials to make it. I mean, it's uh, I bought a pallet of of used keyboards to use the cases from. Um, and then the next round, I'm actually, we're going to be using, um, we're going to get a shipment of cases direct from Cherry this time. So we're going to have brand new cases direct from the factory. And we're going to start with that as a raw stock. So um, the PCB in that in that keyboard, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, we hired a nice, we got an embedded systems engineer on board to help us with that. And what we're going to do from here, we started off with the 1800 form factor. And from there, we can condense it without too much design work. So... Our next keyboard we're rolling out, I've been teasing it, it's called the Molly. And now it's very similar to the modern M0110. And it wasn't intentional, it was actually, I came up with the idea and we started playing around with it. And then all of a sudden I saw the IC for that, I was like, oh God, everyone's gonna think I'm copying or biting. Um, but I'm moving forward with it, I think it's gonna look cool. Um, but it's gonna have the same architecture of the PCB. It's gonna have a real strong processor. You're gonna have breakout pins to add cool things like your OLED screens. Uh, Bluetooth connectivity, you know, whatever you can dream up, you can plug into that thing and make it happen. So, um, you know, let's, I want to see what people what we can do with it. Nice, nice. Do you happen to have a link handy of the Molly? I do, actually. I had it up on my screen because I knew you guys were going to ask. Now I yeah. just I know so that. I, I don't think I've actually seen it yet. So, this, this will be, this will be new for me. Well, it's like I said, it's a, it's a lot like the, um, it's a lot like, oh man, can someone link this thing? Where where did my Twitch go? Hang on a second, guys. <laughs> no worries. One moment. Hold, please. You got that little uh, rainbow thing that used to come out of the TV? Like, yeah, that's, that's who I'm really, like, trying to get in the, the Grand Hall of Fame. Colbeck. <laughs> Evan, what's up? You better late than that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh-huh. You got some background noise going on there. Yeah, I know. I'm just going <laughs> to quickly link it and then jump out. Okay. All right. There. Bam. All right. All right. Here we go. So now you can bring that up on screen as well. Shot. No, and if you've looked at the terminal renders when uh, Thesis Camper did them, he rendered that keyboard so you could kind of get a glimpse on it. Now that weight on the front, I decided to put a weight on the front because it's always on the back. You get this big, beautiful piece of shiny metal and you never see it. You know, it's even worse on some of the other ones, like my Duck Blackbird. I love that keyboard. And I spent a ton of money on a, um, it was Merlin who ran the, the yeah. box for a, a brass weight that had the Blackbird logo on it. I still wish it was an outline of the SR-71. <laughs> that would be nice. But I love it. It looks beautiful, and you don't ever see the damn thing. So I said, let's put it on the front. And I've been talking to some companies in the United States to do some cool plating. So we're going to actually offer it. Um, and it happens to be on my desk. I've got a variety of color of uh Precious metal samples from them. I don't know if it'll come through, but um, the one I particularly like, one like this, and that one's called Black Nickel. Then you've got different golds in that. And these guys actually do uh, they do plating for architectural things and uh, custom jets and yachts. So they do a really good work. So precious metal plating is one option, and we're also going to do uh, physical vapor physical vapor dissipation PVD coating. It's a lot like anode, but it goes on stainless steel or brass, and it looks really rich. So it's something a little different from the normal just brass weight. So, and you'll be able to see it all the time. Fantastic. So when you say weight, are you talking about in this picture the thing on the bottom right? Green thing. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be able. To, what we're going to do is when we offer the kit, we'll offer that as a um, an a la carte part that you can buy additional ones of in different colors, and we're going to try to work with them as best we can to match it to popular key sets. Okay, so just out of curiosity, not trying to pick hairs here, but would yeah. you really call this a weight? Well, no, I mean it's not a weight. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. An accent, that. maybe insert. insert was what I meant to say. Insert. Okay, fair there enough. There is a weight on the back as well, but I mean even without the weights, the thing weighs like seven pounds. So Oof. without yeah. the weights, wow. Yeah, I know. So that is Oof. heavy. <laughs> Thank God for ocean cargo. You know? That is that is <laughs> very heavy. Uh, I mean, without the weights for people that don't want to do the conversion, that's that's. Fairly well over three kilograms. Yeah. So that's that's pretty extreme. Yeah, it's a beast. It's got a nice angle on it. It's gonna be cool. I can't wait to get the prototype. I really wished I would have had it in time for KeyCon this weekend because I will be there. Um, but unfortunately, I won't. I'm just bringing a um, I'm bringing the Team Rebo Samoyed prototype that I have with me. Oh. Um, mm. I'm not sure where we're going with this. Oh, there was a mic. Sorry. Man down. Man down. <laughs> We're used yeah. to that here on Top Five. It's fun. Yeah, it's, like, it's just so covered with shit right now. So, um, yeah, this thing is really nice. Um, I haven't talked to my guys over there in a while, but we do plan on doing an all-aluminum 1800. Um, Blind Assassin and I have been working on it. My thing with it, when we shipped Terminal the first time, I'll tell you guys a quick little story. You guys know Narl Sagan? Yep. I know him. Um Cool guy. Yeah. One, of, one, one of my co- he's a good friend of mine. Um, he brought by his TXCP and he had put uh, Gattistottles on it. And I hated clicky switches. I tried this thing out. The weight of that board with that click, it just it was intoxicating. I wanted one so bad, and um, that's why I built this one almost the exact same way. And I definitely want to offer. I want to give people this giant chunk of metal to bang away on on their desk. Yeah. That's what a lot of people want nowadays, honestly. Like, like huge metal cases, heavy metal cases are in, and they have been in for a couple years now, and people can't really seem to get enough of them. The, the weight of the board, um, you know, we've talked about this before. I, it doesn't really directly describe quality per se, but a lot of people perceive heavier boards as being higher quality because right. they're heavy. And even if it's like a placebo effect or if it's not true, like people still see it that way, and uh, you know, people can't get enough of it. Well, have you seen the movie Snatch? No. You know? Uh, yes. This guy, yes. Boris the Blade. You know, yeah. Boris the Dodger. He says, you know, it's heavy is good. It's reliable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, you can always hit him with it. I don't know if he hits me with a keyboard, but yeah. don't drop it on your foot. That's for sure. Oof, yeah. Uh, quick shout out to some people in chat. Faza just gifted a sub to Jason. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Nice. And uh, Olivia gifted a sub to Blind Assassin. So awesome gifting going around. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. We appreciate it. I had to close the window because when I tried to mute it, it kept talking. Oh, that's all good. Yeah, it's probably like an ad or something, I imagine. Um, 
Yeah, cool. Anyways, so let's uh, let's get back just a little bit to the. Wait, where is this? Here it is. Okay, the. I guess what what exactly is this layout that you are are you calling it something in particular? Because to me, from my angle, it looks kind of like a a sixty percent with a numpad attached to it. Well, I don't have the uh, the original here, but when um, so you guys just talked about the uh, the modern M O one one O A or O M O one one O. Well, a little later when Macintosh came out with the Macintosh Plus, they had the M O one one O A keyboard, which was it's basically a sixty percent with a condensed numpad. And that was that was what we went for. I mean, I my day job, I use my numpad and my arrow keys. So I'm sorry for the 60 percent guys. I just can't do it. I've tried so many times. So um, and I won't it won't be a repetitive thing. I will bring out something without a numpad. But uh, I really like them. So for me, it was just I was naturally drawn towards it. I thought it was uh, it took away the keys I didn't need. It left me the keys I needed, and it had a nice retro aesthetic to it. So that's what we went with. Um, I really wish I had it. It's in a box somewhere, man. I just moved out of my office and into my basement, and I don't have it. I don't. I don't have a clue where it is. Actually, hold on one second. Sure. And while he's doing that, thanks uh, to Geo for the gifted sub to Uncle Broody. Nice. And Olivia. This is the day of gifting, it appears. And Olivia gifted another sub to Overkill. To wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is great. One you of them. Are one of them's in Texas with uh, with Blind Assassin, and I don't know where the other one is. So. Um, just Google it. You'll, you'll find it. Just type in M O one one O A. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I believe I have seen that before. So that's yeah. calling it Molly. I was so sick of typing it. I just started typing Molly, and we said, "Hey, let's call it that." And we did a play on it with like the leap. Oh, that makes. I didn't even put yeah. two and two together that Molly was kind of like a kind of like an acronym there in a way. It was but not an acronym, but uh... type the name over and over again when I was chatting with uh, with my, my guys about it. So uh, I we just start I just called that one day and it was just going to be its uh, its like pet name until it got a real name and we just started... oh no that's, yeah it's cool oh, I like that yeah <laughs> yeah um that's pretty much all I got in the pipeline right now that I can talk about. I mean, like I said, we're working on that beam spring idea, but it's it's in a concept phase right now. It's going to take a lot of engineering to make it work, but I think it's something we can pull off. Um, along with the help of the community, obviously. We've got a couple more key sets coming down the line. Um, we've been chirping about Skidata. We're going to run that again later this year. Um, people really want to see that again. And Yeah, for you know, sure. Is, he's not, he's, I think he just dropped out of the community. So uh, <clears throat> we decided to get up. Uh, I think it, his name's Kaura. And, oh, okay. Um, but, I mean, I don't want to bring up the old stuff, but basically it's a, it's a great set. It was one that really... That I really enjoyed. A lot of people really wanted, and I've had more than one person ask me to run it. So uh, one of my friends kind of just gave me the push and said, "Hey, do it." So we're gonna do it. Cool. So cool. one thing I do want to bring up um, that you said we could ask about earlier, because as you know, you are really great with criticism, as you mentioned. We gotta bring go. it up because you did want to. You did want to kind of talk about it. For a lot of people who may want to know, DSA Drifter. Yeah, what what about it? What's what what's happening there? Because I know there's a lot of people in the dark about what might not be happening, what might be happening. So right. well, hopefully, here's a chance for you to you know help address where is it for those who may right. not be updated. Right. All right. Yes, I'm I'm glad you brought it up. Um, my inbox is, I literally get three emails a day asking me you know in all different ways. Like some are nice, some are mean, some are really mean. Um, <laughs> This set from the beginning, I think what happened was when we originally got the um, the timeline from the factory, they weren't expecting us to sell as many as we did. And our license with uh, with Heart Machine limited us to 500 sets. And I didn't I didn't think we'd hit it, but we hit it. And people wanted more, and we, we couldn't because of our license. Well, it swamped the factory. And make a long story short, a bunch of stuff happened. It's finally done, and... Um, Drum roll, pre, please. It's uh, it's on a UPS truck on its way to my house right now. Ooh. I actually spoke to UPS today, so I'm gonna start. Um, and the guys in the factory actually prepackaged all the kits into boxes for me. Oh, oh nice. Per orders, <clears throat> it made shipping cost a lot more. But um, the nice thing is, is literally, I just gotta, I'm gonna open some up and just double check and make sure everything. Throw in a sticker, and then all I gotta do is just throw a piece of tape on it, throw on a uh, shipping label, and have the post office come pick them up. So hopefully everyone, and this is a soft promise, um, by next Friday, because of the holiday, um, let's say safely by the following Monday, everyone should have theirs that's in the United States. It, you know, 
that would be a very safe estimate. So I apologize to everybody for the delays. They are all out of my control. Thank you for your patience. To those who called me names, that wasn't nice. <laughs> Don't do that. You gotta be be nice to people. Be friendly. I'm trying to do my best here, man. Some things you can't, you know. There's nothing you can do. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, and then while we're on the subject, sorry to cut you off. Um, you? Those who entered the raffle for the extras, I know I I had anticipated this to be here a little sooner, but I have no plans to send out those invoices until I've done a physical inventory of the extras. I don't want to send invoices to people for products I don't have. So yep. please be patient. Keep an eye on your inboxes. It will come from orders at the key dot company. Cool. Got it. Um, so we're going to shift into Q and a here in just a moment, but I do have just one more question about the, the Molly. So do you have any more details about um, like what it entails? Like let's say plate material, um, potential price, any kind of uh, group by dates, things like uh, that. Well, because I don't have the prototype made yet, it's going to be difficult. Okay. But so we're we're still a ways out then. Fair enough. Yeah, it's um. But here's it's the engineering's all done, the PCB's all been designed. I just have to order the sample, which what I was going to order with our restock of the 1800 PCBs. Um. So we're going to try a couple different things. There's a local place to the place that's local to me. There, I forget the name of it. It's written down somewhere. They actually do production level seracoding. So I wanted to give that a try. I mean, why not? We've all seen cool. it. Yeah. There's also a small shop near me that does uh, bright dip anode, and I wanted to see how that looked. So I was thinking of getting a couple samples and out to them to see what comes back. And then whatever seems to be the most cost effective, I don't want to give you guys a $799 keyboard with a 30%. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you a good value, but at the same time, I think it's, it's probably important to cut out some of the bells and whistles to keep the price somewhat affordable for the masses. I'd like to keep it below $400, um, but with something that big, with that much material being moved, removed, and all the, the pl plating and polishing it, you know, it's probably gonna be approaching that that price. For sure, yeah, that's that's understandable too. Okay, cool. So Q and A, guys, if you guys have questions, we have answers, especially for Jason, as he is here with us today. So make sure you <coughs> use the at top clack tag so we can see questions a lot easier. I'd appreciate that. So, of course, quintessential top clack question. This is very important, and you can take some time to think about this if you want. Do you prefer waffles or pancakes? And why? I, and why? Uh, that's an easy one. I like waffles. My two-year-old son, Vincent, eats them every morning, and one of the first things he says to me every morning is, Faffel? <laughs> I usually eat a bite of it. Aww. I love waffles. Fair enough. All right. That's a that's a cute cute reason at least. Yeah, <laughs> one, yeah, lighten the mood. I like it. Uh, Geo and Olivia both just gifted more subs a few moments ago to NGB and Flex Capacitor respectively. So thank you very much for for you guys. You guys are going going way too hard, man. <laughs> yeah. What hair product do I use? Actually, this is there's no product in my hair. <laughs> it's called called shampoo. Oh. My wife owns a hair salon, so I, I use good shampoo. And she does; she's a wonderful hairstylist. So. Oh, that's a that's a, that's a bonus. That's a nice bonus in a relationship. Yeah. She's wild, so, hey babe. Uh, Blind assassin, of course, is asking, can you have the display writer? I think I'm gonna guess the answer to that though. <laughs> eh, well, the problem is it's not mine, so no. But you can probably <laughs> talk to Neural Sagan about Neural Sagan lent it to me for the meetup. Um. So sorry, bud. But I'm, one of these days I'm going to get one. There's a guy on Desk 30 right now. I should, probably shouldn't say anymore. <laughs> Everyone's going to Desk 30 right now. Keep it, keep it on the hush hush. Yeah. Bye, Desk 30. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Once Saved Gaming is asking, are you a gamer at all? I am not. I used to be. Um, the last time I played a video game with Vigor was probably Tiger Woods, like 2001, I think it was. And with <laughs> that, with Perfect Dark. I played Perfect Dark until my eyes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> when I beat that, I was so happy, but, you know, I wish I could play games more, but being a father and being a, a husband and a homeowner and a business owner, it's just, it's just, there's no time. You don't have time, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, oh, man, per oh, I always forget about Perfect Dark. I'm so glad you brought that up. That's it, man. That, that was, was my jam, man. I played so much of that. Perfect Dark. So good. Can we get a Perfect Dark-themed key set? Uh, we'll get on it right now. We're on Oh, it. my God, please. Please. 
The novelties. Yes. Like the Falcon 2 novelty. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised that pops up. Maybe I'll start working on it this, this weekend when I'm at the hotel tomorrow or something. Yeah. That would be fun. Just... I would love to, to see that. Sotar's... And, uh, and most definitely give yeah. feedback. <laughs> so, so Sotar is wondering, what boards do you have in your collection? Oh, man. You guys want to be here till 1 a.m.? <laughs> How about uh, let's go... Give, so... give us a rundown of some of your favorites. Top maybe. five. Yeah, maybe a top five top or something. Five. All right. I got this Apple keyboard. Um... I don't I don't have a name for it. It's a data comp. It's a black Apple keyboard and it's um God, what is the model number? I also I will post a picture in somewhere later on Reddit or something like that. Um this is black Alps board. It's sweet. It's in a box I just moved. I love that thing. I love Alps keys. They are just if you've never tried them, I mean they put the best MX which is the shame. Um favorites, of course I love my eighteen hundreds. Um I've got so many of those, I don't even know. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I mean, lately, you know what board I really love is the Fell that Leandrin did? Yeah, that was pretty solid. The simplicity of it and the way that the weight was designed, I, I thought that was really clever. I own one of those. It's in a box. I need to get it out. I don't type on it because I don't do 60s, but I look at it a lot and put key, <laughs> dress it up with keycaps and play with it. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it. But uh, my da- my daily driver is either an, uh, an a 980C, which I have two of, or an 1800. Okay, fair enough. So I do got to say, if you like looking at keyboards, you should get one of these type arrays, a little it's a nice little acrylic stand. Put a keyboard up there, you know, put it on a shelf somewhere. Look at keyboards all you want. Those are rad. Who sells those? Um, type arrays. I-, I found them on Instagram. I was just like, just look up type arrays. I forgot, I forgot his username, but these are, like, really cheap. I have Type seen array. Yeah. Type array, yeah. That's going to be cool to find a way to just kind of, like, mount them on the wall and cover the wall with them. That would Although be great, just, too. But I don't know how you would do it. Maybe something like that that could wall mount. Would be I think neat. some people used, uh, like, pegboards and, like, just use metal hooks and then create, like, yeah. like platforms. That could work. That would be neat. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Ten minutes from now, it's gonna hit me. Oh, I should have mentioned that board is my favorite. And so I'm sorry, I don't. But Daily Driver is an F uh, is a 980C. I love that thing. Ooh, 980C is a very solid board. Feel yep. good music is asking. Um, specs of your Blackbird. It's also his favorite keyboard. Yeah, that's those are great. It's a beautiful board. It's really well made. What are the specs of yours? He is oh, asking. Oh, I've got. Uh, the the middleweight mod switches um that was like the the hottest newest thing at the time i got those uh so the, the tactile ones i think they're like the, the the orange color i painted the plate blue it's the same blue we used for the matte blue tkc 1800s and um 24 karat stabs i don't know why i use those just because they look cool uh, <laughs> but yeah i love that thing it's a, it's in a box too i think i actually just got it back from storage I need to break that out. And I got uh, Skidata mounted on it right now. Nice, nice. Um, People are pretty light on the questions today, so... um, Guys, come on. Yeah, like, if you guys have questions, man, feel free to feel free to ask. But I might as well ask you while you're here, like, what are, what are your preferences on switches exactly? Because, you know, obviously you're, you're really into designing and pushing these these cool new things in the community. But a lot of people kind of forget about, like, switches. And sometimes people just don't care about them. But as a switch lover myself, I'm always curious to know what other people are really into. Honestly, like, on a daily basis, I switch between tactile, rubber dome, rubber dome, and, uh, rubber, 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 no, man. I, I, between that and, and tactile, and um, I've really been getting into linears lately. When you lube them up nice, and I don't know if you guys have seen those those PCBs I sell from time to time that you can harvest. Um, they're nice. They're just these PCB mounted 1800 boards. I pop the tops off of them, and I just kind of play. So this this last board I built these uh, these cherry stottles. They sound awesome. These things are fantastic. I hate clicky switches, but I love these things. Um, but I'm I'm anxious to try those. Uh, those royals you guys were just talking about. Oh, the the new Hako royals. Yeah, I, I got I've got a, a bag of the trues and I haven't mounted them yet, but um, I kind of bounce around back and forth. Linear and tactile though, or when it comes to MX, is it's pretty much my thing, and it's it's usually not an off the shelf switch. I usually have to open them up and play around. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, right? I mean, isn't that? Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah right? no. but, um, yeah. It's, where did my little window go here? I'm gonna tell you guys about something. Sure. Oh well. 
we'll go back to it. Well, if I if I remember, we'll. <laughs> okay, no worries. Uh, Huang ninety five has a good question. Sure. What do you guys prefer? A value oriented board, not budgeted, but value, or a balls to the wall like Zephyr? So something very intricately and extremely designed and expensive, or you know something that has a lot of value, like a, something uh, it's cheap. In terms of something that we would sell or something that I would buy. Something that you would buy, I imagine. This is probably from a consumer perspective. Well, I mean, everyone's budget's different, and I try to keep that in mind as a vendor because I know there's some people that just. I mean, I had a guy order almost eight hundred dollars with a terminal earlier uh, yesterday. <laughs> Awesome. You know, and some people are, you know, are just, are, you don't have that kind of disposable income. So, yeah, money's relative. So. You know, it's, it's nice if you can have, I like keyboards that come in that are, are, are smart, like tray styles are cool for the 60% because they're, they're, they're less expensive to manufacture. And you get a nice looking board. Um, it's fun going balls to the wall. Some things are a little like that. What was that board you showed us earlier? Really? Like it was like, <laughs> something 96. But, the the Moyen, I think it was Moyen, called, yeah. or yeah. Moyen, Moyen, something like that. Awesome. You know, it looks cool. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd spend that much money on it. Um, some of the boards, though, I mean, like Rama's boards are really, really well made. The quality control is top notch. They're worth the money, you know. And when we bring out the Molly, I, I can tell you, I, the, it'll be worth it. It'll be a value for what you're spending. Um, but whether or not you want to spend that much on a keyboard. That's a very, I think, subjective thing. Yeah. There's a lot of gray areas here because a keyboard can be very expensive, like the Zephyr, for example, but still be a good value for what it is. So and some it's really cool. I mean, some are really innovative. What was the one I bought last night? It was called a, if I don't get the name right, please don't murder me. I think it's called the Helidox. I think so. I think that's, I think, I think that's right, though. I saw, I, I saw it pop up. I was like, man, that's awesome. I'm going to buy it because it's, it's like sub $75. Yeah. It's cool. It's gonna, you know, it's a it's a conversation piece. If you've got the time to learn to type on it, you know, if, or if you're already, an, uh, you know, an ortholinear user, it's 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 rad. So I mean, yeah. There's all kinds of things coming out. Just you gotta be aware of some of the other things. I mean, a lot of people when they jump in, what's what's the first keyboard I should buy? You know, buy one on Mac Market, man. Talk to the owner. You know, yeah. Don't go Corsair. You're just gonna be disappointed. Yeah. So let's let's finish up this question. Where Brian balls to the wall. Or value? Uh, well, I mean, I, there's so many gray areas, like I was just saying. Just, just, so just it, go. It's, it's, just go, it's really man. hard. But I, I think I think cheaper value is where I I usually am at because I usually can't spend five $600 on a keyboard. I'm going to be the outlier so. and say uh, balls to the wall. I mean, I spent how many hundreds of dollars for an all-brass E6? Well, let's be real. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's like it, it's fun but it's like it's not something you do for every board right like you can't really spend that kind of money on every single board so like you really need those value options as well yeah Oof, that feel when i'm waiting for my jer invoice <laughs> I guess I could, if i can add to that that response you know for me if i'm going to spend a ton of money on something um keyboard wise lately i've been buying a lot of vintage stuff i'm really into it i, I just it's it's fun i mean if you're yeah. uh you like playing around, I mean, you can find some cool stuff on eBay if you dig for not a lot of money. Or you can spend a ton of money and get some really cool stuff, too. So try Alps. If you haven't tried them, everybody out there, I want you to go out there and buy a beat-up Alps board, a Focus 2001, an AEK, something. And just get your fingers on these things and feel it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes, it is a very different feel than MX. That's for sure. Uh, Blind Assassin is asking for a raise. <laughs> I can't give you a raise. <laughs> As soon as we get the going, buddy, don't worry. He follows up with a real question, question asking what your all-time favorite Switch is. All-time favorite? I mean, is there an answer to that question? I mean, all-time people... favorite, out of the box. I don't know, man. I, I don't think I can answer that. I don't feel comfortable. Brian, you take it... I don't think I'd feel comfortable answering that either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's just. I mean, if, if you're going to use just something out of the box, uh, probably a like a cherry brown or even a, um, you know, if you're talking cheap out of the box brown, maybe a, Zelios are awesome. They're just expensive, you know. I'll give uh, you. I'll give you my current top three: Holy Pandas, 55 gram Topra, Beam Spring. There you go. That sounds good. Beam Spring is unlike anything I've ever felt. It's just incredible. It's very different. But uh, yeah, Topra, I mean, that's fair. I, I type on it almost every day. So, I mean, I guess that'll be my answer. 55-gram Topra. 
Then so when I get around to putting my BKE domes on, I'll let you know if I like them better. PMSing Chicken is asking, are you doing the key company full time or is it a side gig? It started as a side gig. Um, my main gig has been pretty slow this year. Um, I work in the insurance business. Uh, I do disaster recovery stuff for, uh, so it's called restoration contracting. You know, your house gets just destroyed by hail, and I work with contractors and help them fight the insurance companies. Well, this year, there's not been a lot of hail in any of the markets that I work in, so I've been focusing on this more, which it's actually a good opportunity because, you know, like Blind Assassin wants to work on this beam spring thing, and, you know, I got the time to do it. And people more and more lately have been asking me to help them run sets so I've got more time available to do it. So right now it's it's uh, it's pretty full time, but we, you know I also help my wife with our hair salon, so uh, which we just opened in April. Um, nice. So that's kind of my thing. Like my daily thing is like I don't really go to a job, but I work really hard and I work a lot of hours. Fair enough. All right, uh, Violet of Viceroy is asking, what are some of your favorite keycap sets? Oh man, let's see. I really love Modern Selectric. You guys have that one? I used to. I would like a GMK version. At one version. point, yeah. It's an OG, man. I love that thing. Um, it's got to be one of my favorites. I really like Led Zepp. And not because I ran it. <laughs> Honestly, I love it. Bias. No. <laughs> it's just a great color combination, man. It's like the, the yellow vintage keys. They just, they're perfect. If you guys haven't seen it in person, I cannot capture it with a camera and show you this. It's just, it's awesome. Um... I don't know, and then I really like this one. You guys talked about it earlier. Yes, the TA Lava. typewriter, yes. That's that's pretty classy. It's yeah. awesome, and all those sub-legends are just so cool. And then these, uh, you guys remember this? this can you see it all right? Yeah, the Breaking Bad keys, yeah. It's a natural, you know, a natural pair. Yeah, those are some of my favorites. Um, I'm trying right. to think of my head. My, my brain's racing to... <laughs> Oh, with a good answer. I really like Godspeed. Um, I like Space Cadet quite a bit. Space Cadet. That's, yeah. def that's definitely up there for me. Yeah, Space Cadet's up you know, there. If there's a question you guys want to ask to get a definitive answer on, what's my favorite profile to type on? It's Cherry, hands down. Good man. For sure. Yeah. If anyone wanted to know. We're all in agreement there. Yeah, there's no, I mean, typing on SA to me is just so tedious, and DSA is just, I don't know. It's I... like. I, I, I always put it as SA is a great looking profile, yeah. but bad to type on. For me, SA is what a profile I use to retire a board. If I'm going to put a board on a shelf to never type on again and only be an art piece, I'll throw SA on there. But yeah. if I'm ever going to actually use it, I guess that can't be SA. That's a really good idea. I mean, that's I honestly I put SA modern, when I got Modern Selectric when I first got into the hobby. I put it on a board. I typed on it for a week. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> It's, I just, it's, it's just that's bad. what I do too. I, I remember I originally I bought like I bought jukebox second hand. Like I got like a good deal on it. First time ever using an essay set. Uh, it was after like the first time it ran, and I was like, "This looks really good. Does it feel very good?" Oh. <laughs> and uh, I've I've used it pretty minimally since then. I did own Godspeed because I I really like the Godspeed colorway on essay. I think it looks otherworldly good it's freaking incredible but i just don't like typing on it <laughs> yeah that's going on a board on my wall i got a special painted tkc 1800 i'm gonna put it on i just haven't had time maybe i'll do the build log with it how about that guys what do you think i think that'd be a good idea all right thank okay. you let's uh let's move on a little bit because we do still have some more questions to get through let's not try to get too tied up here uh faza is asking for our favorite linear switches um, so I mentioned Telios earlier. I think as far as stock switches go, Telios are very good. Um, yeah, T Telios are probably my top pick for like for overall feel right now. Um, if you can get really good vintage blacks and you lube yeah. them very well but very lightly, I think those also can can be amazing, uh, particularly for the sound. I think as far as value goes, box blacks uh, are really good from Kale, Gateron yellows, just like, you know, these classics that are kind of tried and true at this point that have good value. What about you guys? Favorite linear. Hmm. The loop, my, my loop Telos, pretty good, pretty good. Having my unicorn. I still need to do a little yeah. bit more tuning, but they're, they're pretty good. I am, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the silent 
the silent line telios which are gonna be orange uh, i don't know why i'm calling them silent telios so it's gonna be silent orange oh that's right they're gonna have a different name um huh? but i'm looking forward to that from zeal to be honest other than that it's gonna be that or i mean if you if you get if you get really nice worn in retold blacks which are would be you know very equivalent to getting really nice vent blacks almost and then looping those up really well very thin of course it's good because they have good sound to them yeah that's what i use a lot of, for a lot of my builds when i just when i need to throw something together because i have so many of them those PCBs, those retooled, worn-in MX Blacks, get a nice, get a brush like you showed earlier, Brian, and uh, just get the, for me, I just get the rails. I put in different springs, and yeah, they're awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're... All right. Uh, Gio is asking, can we get a terminal set for the Top Clack two-year anniversary giveaway? I would like the chance to win one. <laughs> yeah. What is, you're such a shill, Gio. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Uh, if, if, that, we, that would, that cool. <laughs> if we sell over 500, I think we can make something like that happen. All right, there you go. Buy them, people. So yeah. You have a chance. Um, to, so um, the rest of us can have a chance to win one. Let's, let's make this the fastest set to hit MOQ in history. I don't think that's. I don't know. Maybe did Laser hit MOQ in one day? Yeah. It, yeah, it did. It might have. Yeah. Very lost. That set's great, by the way. I, I forgot about Laser's that. Laser's really cool. It's, it's very. It has a lot of character. Yeah. It's just I grew up in that era. I mean, I'm, I'm almost forty, so that colors those colors me to speak to my childhood, and just I love it. Nice job, you know. Heck yeah! Uh, Violet Vice worth asking, what is your favorite off-the-shelf manufactured board brand? Mm. Leopold, Real, for Real Force. Le Leopold's probably mine as well. Leopold, Real Force, and you know, Philco is always kind of a classic go-to. They're really well made. The cases are really nice plastic. They just there's nice little details to them. They're nice and heavy, thick plates. They're good. Uh, Base DLX asking, do you go on hunts for vintage stuff, i.e. at recycling centers, junkyards, thrift stores, etc.? Yeah, is that a loaded question? Yes, I do. Um, I have a friend. Um, well, he's a friend now, but um, yeah, if you call around in your area and just to local electronics recyclers, not the big huge corporate ones like GWR, because they'll just tell you to hit the road. But a lot of times they're pretty cool, man. They'll let you go in and, and just go splunking. So just, uh, you know, bring a, make sure you can wash your hands afterwards. It's pretty disgusting when you think about how people have been touching keyboards. But I found some really cool stuff in that pile. Actually, there's one sitting right here. I was getting ready to do something with this. I don't even know what it is. It's like a SIG Mini Touch, but it's not. The BTC 5100, probably. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's... Yep. it's it's awesome. It's not. I know it. It's, 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 it's like it's, a tote board. It's yeah, it's, it's 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 referred to as a vintage budget topra. I, I love. This Brian thing, has man. one too in black. <laughs> I have one right here. <laughs> yeah, man, these things are great. Now eBay is going to be top search. Watch a trend on eBay. Yeah. No, I, I, what's funny is I've been trying to sell this too. Just kind of trying to like clean up my collection a bit. I, I really do like it for what it is. I just never really use it. But it it is a surprisingly fun and funky board. It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely try that out. I like doing it. It's fun. A lot of times you'll see, like, other cool old stuff in those kind of places. And a lot of times the owners are really laid-back dudes. They probably just, you know, they like a real laid-back kind of lifestyle. And, you know, they're friendly and find neat stuff. You know, who knows? You might find a beam spring. Who knows? Yeah. All right. Now we have to activate the lightning round so we can try to catch up on some of these yeah. questions. Uh, first, shout-out to Sweaty Yeti. Thank you for all the bits you just donated. Appreciate that. Uh, Flex Capacitor is asking a question for Jason. Love what you do for the community. So excited for my Drifter order coming. Question, though. What's your favorite part of what you do in your biz? Oh, well, thanks for the compliment. And um, honestly, it's it's meeting people and talking to people in the community. I love it. You know, um, it can be nerve-wracking when you when you launch a new product. Like, are they going to like it? Are they going to like it? And I think I had a heart attack the morning I sent out the first TKC 1800s, but... The people I meet and interact with, when people drop me emails, and a lot of you probably know, you know, I can be verbose. It's a word I learned from Uncle Broody. Um, but I like to meet people, you know. Everyone out there, we're all pretty laid back and chill. And, um, I mean, that's that's what makes it fun, right? Making new friends. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah. All right. The homie 408 is asking, do you have any social media accounts you post updates on for the key company? Yeah, we have an Instagram and a Facebook, and I'm, I try to be more diligent about posting there. I, I actually sign up for this thing called Hootsuite that makes it a little more consistent. Um, however, trying to keep them on Reddit, Geek Hack, Desk Authority, and then on those, it's like 
I, I'm sorry. Um, I do have them though. So you're welcome to jo- to drop by, and uh, I promise in the coming weeks it'll be more consistent. All right. Uh, energy... I don't think about Twitter, so I, if I suck at it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, NGB with a non-keyboard question. Sure. What is his favorite type of music and favorite musical artist? So I, I imagine they're talking about you. All right. Um, well, I like a lot of music, um, just about everything. I, mean, I don't really like too much as country and the rap that's been coming out in the last decade or so. Um, but my favorite band of all time, hands down, is Clutch. Never even heard of them. Nope. Either you've never heard of them or you love them. or somewhere in between, but um, <laughs> they're an awesome rock band out of Maryland. I've been into them since I was 14. They're fantastic. And a sec- close second would be Metallica. That's pretty oh, classic. Yeah. Always a classic choice. All right. Uh, Sir Cor- Corbin Dallas is asking Mike's, wait, Mike, well, Jason's thoughts on uh, GMK Hamon set by um, uh, Zombuman. Uh, link me. Wait, is that the um, the yellow and black one? No, uh, it's red and oh, uh, it's white, like white on red. Well, I'll, I'll I'll throw it in the chat. Am I out of the loop on this one? I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, let me just find the. Oh, here it is. Okay. You're a, you're a little out of the loop. We've, we've talked about this set quite a few times. It was it was originally teased in April as an April Fool's joke. Okay. But uh, oh, here we go. Tur- turns out people really liked it. So you know, it's not terrible. Yeah, it, it, it's inspired by uh, Hamon, which is obviously yeah, Spanish a, Spanish ham. Spanish ham, yeah. <laughs> Get the Iberco set, man. Yeah. Yep, that, yep. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like it. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> it is. I mean, if you're gonna do an all red set, you know, do it like this, man. Put a little pizzazz, you know. It's, I dig. Yeah, yeah my thumbs up. <laughs> cool, cool. So there you go. There's there's the thoughts on that. And uh, and that is it for questions, which is which is uh, perfect timing, actually. Cool. We're 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 right around our target time. So, guys. Thank you all for uh, for viewing this today and, and you know keeping up with us and asking us questions and et cetera. Jason, thank you very much for coming on today and schooling like us on a bunch of information and advice. Thanks yeah. for having me. It was fun, man. Well, maybe I'll, uh, when I got something new to show you guys, I'll come back on and do this again sometime. Heck, Heck yeah, dude. Yeah. We're all um, before before we news. end, um, Jason, any final words, comments, or anything you'd like to like to say for the audience? See, I just want to th- I'll thank everybody in the community, first of all, because without you guys, none of this stuff happens. There's no way I can make these products happen out of my own pocket. Um, you guys, for running Top Clack, thank you. It's great. People need to be informed. I love the show. Um, and, you know, hey, keep on going. Be, feel free to email me anytime. Ideas, comments, criticisms, whatever. Um, I'd love to hear from you. So just shoot, shoot me an email on, uh, I got orders at the key.company. Or um, PM, PM me on Reddit or Geek Hack. Awesome. Thank cool. you so much for showing up. Everyone, check out the the key dot company online when you get a chance. Check out that round two of GMK Terminal. Um, hey, maybe we'll get over 500 sets and maybe we can <laughs> swing swing a set for a top back giveaway. Who knows? But check yeah, it out when you get a chance. <laughs> it was a really popular round one. I know a ton of people felt bad they missed out. So oh, if you yeah. felt bad you missed out, round two. It, it is here. It's going to be shipping late, sh- shipping, late, uh, shipping late December. Um, if you're in Asia, you got Z Frontier. If you're in Europe, you got MyKeyboard.eu. Um, get at it. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Every Thursday at 6 p.m., we have our Top Clack episode. I'll be gone next week, so it'll just be Brian Manning the Fort. More details on that later. Later tonight, I will be building up my Modern M0110. But until then, everyone, have a wonderful evening. We will catch you later.